Welcome tonight in journey in the world of Mr. Dickie Edwin Hindorto. And we are going to take a journey in the world of Edwin as a, of Dickie as a expert in sustainability and uh, carbon market. Uh, and uh, I want to put Dickie on the strike that, and it's going to be very simple, Dickie. Welcome. Thank you for your time on this Friday evening. And, You're welcome. And, You're welcome. And 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 uh, yeah, the simple first question is, uh, who is Mr. Dicky? Uh, me. My yeah, name is Dicky Hidato, and then yeah, I'm nobody actually. So I'm only the man who behind the screen. <laughs> but sometimes I'm on stage. Yeah, um, uh, yeah. Uh, to let you know who I am, so I must uh, tell a story about uh, myself. So my name is Tigetin Edwin Hindarto, and uh, I was born in Malang. Uh, Malang is a uh, east of a city uh, near Surabaya. So I was born in Malang and grew up in Malang, and then uh, I work in Jakarta. So. Uh, yeah, I work in the field that maybe uh, not too much person uh, understand about it. Uh, so I work uh, in sustainability, uh, carbon market, as well as in energy transition. So uh, for some people, it is very new field. But for me, I've been doing this for 29 years. So this is uh, who I am, a person that uh, I'm nobody, but I work in the field that maybe not too many person work in it. So, yeah. Yeah, okay. I, know, and I, I can also understand that uh, in 29 years, uh, a lot of in, in, a lot of three change in the energy transition and also in the uh, building automation because it's a sm small part of that. Um, uh, mm. Can you explain what, what changed about that? Were you in the 29 years? Yeah, if we talk about the uh, 29 years of my uh, works uh, in this sector, so it is up and down. Actually, this issue itself, uh, the issue itself is uh, up and down. When, when I was uh, working uh, in my first uh, company as an energy auditor, so it's still a very rare person who work uh, as an energy auditor uh, at that time. Uh, so. It is uh, very uh, difficult to find people who understand what is uh, energy auditor and who how to do the energy efficiency and then how to implement energy conservation and something like that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, uh, this energy efficiency issues then change to renewable energy issues. Uh, people uh, begin to talk about renewable energy and then. Uh, uh, and about the beginning of uh, 2000s, the year 2000. So uh, people uh, were talking about uh, climate change. So the subject is uh, not uh, directed to energy, but uh, we uh, the concern of the global uh, the global communities are in climate change. So uh, climate change is so. Uh, is including energy issue, issue is in, in it. Uh, then we, then uh, the issue itself grows uh, and grew very fast, and then uh, it become a uh, global, global, uh, global trending topic. Until now, because uh, we talk about climate change, so we talk about uh, we must talk about also about uh, about sustainability. Uh, we must talk. Uh, about the energy efficiency and yeah, everything about it. Yeah, I understand. I come from the Netherlands, of course, and I remember that in 2001 to 2004, we had an emerging market for uh, energy auditing of, of, of uh, buildings on the energy preservation. Yeah. We called it APA and APE. And, and uh, did you experience it also in Indonesia that, that Indonesia yeah, was yeah, yeah. to do that? Yeah, uh, actually, uh, if we talk about the energy uh, energy uh, audit in buildings, it is kind of uh, the ABC book. 
for the energy auditor. So building is one of the simplest thing uh, to be audited. Not as complicated as uh, industry or not uh, complicated as uh, infrastructures, other infrastructures. So uh, when you became uh, to learn about energy audit, so most probably uh, the your first basic uh, lesson is energy audit in buildings. That's why uh, if you ask me, do I have experiences uh, in buildings energy auditing? Yes, I have many uh, uh, many experiences in uh, energy audit in buildings. Uh, not only because it is uh, the simplest thing, but uh, also in Indonesia, uh, if we talk about the buildings, there are so many buildings that uh, have uh, very big opportunities uh, to be reduced uh, the energy. So I think, uh, yeah, more than 50 maybe uh, building have been audited. I, I, I'm now uh, seven years in Indonesia and learning how Indonesia see uh, energy neutrality and, 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 net, and net zero. Uh, net zero. And, and I heard you say they still have a lot to learn and, and, and you still have to find people who understand it. Can you explain that? What is the difficulty for energy transition in Indonesia? The energy transition is a very new animal. And even uh, for the government officers, not so many government officers understand what is the energy transition. But basically, if you talk about the, uh, energy transition, it is the transition uh, to change uh, the coal to more cleaner energy or uh, from the fossil fuel to uh, renewable energy or at least uh, from uh, the fuel, uh, the oil uh, to gas or something like that. So uh, every energy transition uh, should impact it uh, to the reduction of the emission. So yes, uh, again, that uh, energy transition, not only about the transition of the energy, but uh, how then uh, it is about how then to reduce the energy, uh, the energy emission from the atmosphere. So because of the energy emission uh, currently in the world is the biggest emission. Okay, and 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 um, I heard you say many times I miss the nobody. I know you are someone who. Is a, how do you call that? A hands on person, no nonsense and, and straightforward. That's how I know you. If you don't like it, you don't like it. If you like it, you, you embrace it. Uh, <laughs> that's the impression I have from you. And uh, but if you look at if you look at uh, but you hit it, you hit the you hit the spot there, right? Uh, if you look at the, the the carbon footprint of Indonesia, if you yeah. talk about uh, the capita, right? Um, if you look, for example, uh, a country like Qatar have a capita of uh, thirty five. And and, yeah. and and number one, uh, I, I forgot about Bahrain, I think, at uh, 50. And the average of the world is 4.7, if I'm correct. And, yeah. And and the, the, the top 15, the lowest number 15 is maybe 17. And Indonesia only have 2.03. So my, my I, I also embrace sustainability and I hear the energy transition. I see a lot of focus on the renewable energy, but uh, um, we we focus on, on reducing the emission, but shouldn't we focus on 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 improving the grid? For example, well, what's your opinion about that? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, it is a very compli uh, complicated situation in Indonesia. If it, uh, we compare it to the world, so uh, you are very right that Indonesia is maybe number twelve or maybe number uh, no, low, sixteen or something uh, compared to other. Uh, compared to other uh, countries that uh, for the for the energy uh, for the energy emission, I mean the the, the, the Indonesia maybe yeah number twelve or maybe uh, thirteen or something yeah uh, if uh, we compare it uh, with China or with US, but if we compare the per capita energy emission, it, it will be very different. So the per, per capita energy emission currently uh, you are very right that the, the the Qatar and then the UAA, uh, the United Emirates Arab, are mm -hmm. uh, the two countries that currently have the highest uh, emission per capita. Yeah. Uh, compared to Indonesia, it's only, yeah, maybe two. Uh, but you must remember, 
the Indonesia energy intensity are very high, meaning that uh, there are a lot of a uh, lot of energy uh, that are not used uh, properly. I mean that uh, the uh, the energy conservation opportunities are very big. This is the first. Second, if you talk about the energy itself, so uh, if you compare to Indonesia, Qatar, China, and maybe uh, United uh, Arab, uh, the UAE, uh, and other countries, uh, we compare to Indonesia. So the Indonesia energy growth are the highest. So uh, for about the 2010 until now, we have uh, more than 150% uh, growth. And then uh, it will be triple uh, in 2030. So Indonesia energy efficiency, sorry, Indonesia energy consumption is still very dependent on the two factors. First is about the uh, the uh, growth of population, and then second is about the the growth of economy. So this uh, economic growth and population growth are the two factors that are currently uh, very uh, influence uh, the energy consumption, the energy demand, also the the emissions, uh, the the greenhouse gas emission in Indonesia. So it means that Indonesia are uh, still very hungry uh, to the energy. Yeah, true. Is it good? I think in some sentence it is good, but uh, hungry uh, meaning that uh, we also eat uh, healthy food, not the junk food. Meaning if uh, we eat only the junk food, like the, the uh, energy that are not uh, efficient or uh, the, the, the very dirty energy like coal. So it is not good for our health. So this is why uh, we not only uh, need uh, to be diet <laughs> yeah, to reduce the emission, but we also uh, must change uh, the food itself. So we eat, we must eat uh, the healthy food, not the junk food. I agree. But if you say that, if you say that, because, uh, you know, I, I, I have a lot of a big network globally, right? And now the world is pushing that we go to renewable energies and, and that kind of stuff and EV and um, uh, the battery production goes up. But also they announced that the oil production will probably double the coming 10, 10 years, right? Uh, uh, because of the demand. And uh, Indonesia, has, in my opinion, uh, one of the few countries who's really pushing on the, the healthy food, how you say it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and uh, uh, mutual friends that we have in Indonesia try to uh, motivate local local energy production, uh, bec yeah. but uh, mostly outside of Java, because uh, for Java, for example, I learned uh, when I was doing with Brin and, and all the other things, right? Uh, we have over 40% overcapacity after the finishing of the power plant in uh, Cedarborn. Uh, only the thing is, uh, also 40% of Java still without good network, good, good grid. So, 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 how do you see that? Because Java is the is the fat one in here. If we talk about energy, uh, how how to make that fair and and, and distribute it equally? Yeah, it is very said that uh, if uh, I must say that in Java itself. Uh, if you talk about the electricity, you are, talk, uh, are talking about electricity. So the electricity in Java currently are uh, over production, about uh, 50 percent of over production and 50 percent of uh, uh, over capacity. So more than 50 percent actually. Okay. So uh, and uh, more than 80 percent of the electricity that generated in Java are coming from the coal. So yes. Java is the key, like uh, Java, Java adalah kunci. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Java is the key, but you must also remember that uh, in Java, uh, there are also about uh, more than 150 million people live in Java. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, the government duty uh, 
then not only to make uh, the energy uh, more accessible and more uh, more uh, efficient efficient in Java, but also then how then to develop uh, the other islands so uh, the population in Java then can be separated uh, to other island too. So uh, years ago we have what we call a transmigration program. Uh, currently, uh, currently a very very limited person uh, want to move uh, to uh, other island uh, with the government programs. But uh, if we talk about Java and we talk about the energy supply, uh, one thing that we must uh, understand there are no uh, direct uh, connection uh, from Java to Sumatra. Java only connected with uh, Bali and then uh, Bali and Madura. Meaning that uh, if Java then offer production and over uh, over capacity, uh, Java cannot uh, send uh, the electricity uh, to other islands that are need uh, the electricity badly. So for example, like uh, if uh, we connect it to Lombok or maybe to other island of Nusa Tenggara, it will be very good and it will be uh, it will be uh, beautiful if we see that uh, Java not uh, uh, become uh, the, the national problem, but it can be the national software for the uh, for the power generation. Currently, if uh, we have electricity that generated in Java, and then uh, PLN must buy it, uh, so yeah, it will be a lot of uh, uh, waste energy, <laughs> energy wasted. Yeah, and 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 Dicky, uh, if you look at yourself in this position, eh, because I, now these are general problems, right? Uh, uh, what is your drive? Why why you keep on going in Indonesia for this topic? Because you are someone who really fights hard. That's also why you uh, go on stage sometimes against your own principles because you don't want to be in the spotlight, <laughs> right? But why do you I keep in pushing? The spotlight sometimes. <laughs> but, 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 but why do you keep pushing? Yeah, uh, there is no way out, uh, and there is uh, and there is uh, no turning back. So I walk in here, and then I live in here, and I love this country. And then yes, uh, I have uh, many clients from uh, from other countries like uh, like Japan, and then uh, Germany, and also I have a client from uh, from Sweden. There are uh, there are a lot. Uh, Lot of companies uh, that currently hire me as uh, their consultant uh, in energy and, and climate change. But uh, speaking, but uh, why then I keep doing this? Because it's also good money in it. Okay, I, must say, I must say that uh, there are a lot of uh, if, uh, there are a lot of opportunities to, uh, to implement or to, to do a lot of uh, works in climate change and energy transition. So it should be. Uh, a lot of opportunity to make a good money or to make uh, your fortune and, uh, or to get uh, a good uh, salary and payment in it. So this right. is very normal. It's very yeah. normal. We are emerging country. So I think, uh, I think uh, we also must uh, yeah, find uh, kind of a field that uh, can generate uh, good uh, economic value, not only give, uh, not only give uh, to others, mean that the, we also get uh, for ourselves. So uh, not only uh, uh, giving to communities, but we also go, uh, get a good payment uh, to do that. So yeah, that's yeah. why I, I, I still doing that. So so I'm not a very idealist uh, person. I'm a very, as you know that. Uh, I'm very straightforward person. Yeah, straightforward and realistic. And, and, and realistic, yes. Yeah, and, and when you when you look at uh, the young Dicky, did the young Dicky knew that he was going to be here where he is now? No, no, no. I always uh, been dreaming uh, as a poetry uh, as poetry uh, writer. 
so until now I still uh, I still wrote uh, many poets, many poems, and then also uh, write a short uh, story for that, and then uh, also still uh, like and enjoy uh, poetry reading. Okay, and what do you like about it? What what is your passion behind making poems? Ooh, your drive? Yeah, yeah, I just like it. So uh, a long time ago, I uh, just want to be a writer. Okay. I just uh, want to be a writer. So, uh, but then I realized that, okay, I uh, also can do math, uh, math. I also can, uh, you know, uh, do some chemistry or something like that. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I began to study the engineering, but I still, uh, right, poetry. That's very important that you stick to your roots. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, and many many people that, that that fight for a career forget that, especially in, in, if you grow really fast. I mean, uh, uh, okay. And 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 if if you look at if if you look at uh, the things that you've done, I know I know what you've done, but but uh, I want to hear it from you. What, what is the thing, even when you're so humble, what are you the most proud of? What project that you think now? I'm really happy that I did that one. Mm -hmm. What project? Yeah, I, you really know, I have I have many projects that have been uh, uh, developed, but uh, one of my projects, uh, I'm one of the uh, designer and I'm one of the um, uh, what you call the godfather of the GCM. Joint creating mechanism. It is the, the, the bilateral cooperation between uh, Japan and Indonesia, and it has become a very solid uh, system uh, that allow company and that allow uh, the uh, private sectors uh, to use uh, our uh, support for the emission reduction. So this is uh, one of my achievement, and the CCM itself is my baby. So <laughs> okay. again, that. Yeah, uh, that uh, we develop uh, the GCM from scratch uh, from a piece of paper until now become uh, the most uh, the uh, the most uh, you know uh, not complicated but uh, the most favorite uh, for the for the private sectors uh, uh, to be uh, to, to to use it for the emission reduction support. Okay, interesting. So, 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 uh, um, you're very proud on that one. And, and, and are there also projects that you wish you never did? Sorry? Is there also a project that you wish you never did? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. I hope that I never did, uh, I never study engineering so I can become a good poetry writer. <laughs> 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 yeah why why not why 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 not engineering yeah because because uh yeah you know demi uh i have common interest but uh, in engineering and then uh and the social issues so i can do both actually uh yeah. uh when i choose uh long time ago when i choose uh, engineering as my way of life as my bushido so, um, yeah, it is a very uh, difficult, uh, very very difficult um, uh, choice because, uh, on the other hand, uh, I really like to study people. I really like to uh, write anything that uh, crossed my mind, and then I really like to uh, study. Uh, social things and then communication. Even I, I like uh, to study communication, and I do a uh, lot of uh, lot of uh, writing for the social and the communication. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, maybe uh, if I'm not entering uh, the engineering world, I'm uh, well. Maybe uh, I'll be a good uh, novel writer or something like that. Yeah, I understand that. I, I, I recognize it also because we have it in common. I, I don't have an engineering background. I have a, I had a different life. So I only have my high school and then I became a construction worker and then I became a recruiter 
and then I became a, 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 a uh, how do you call that? An, 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 a professional on psychology of influencing and communication, and also have hobby music and writing and that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can recognize that, and that led also that I love to help people. I, I mean, I love it when, for example, mm -hmm. someone like you call me and Damien, can you do a little big project with us? But I also love it when. Uh, the Kapala of a Kampun called me and Damien, you have to sleep on the floor and you have to study the rice for the week <laughs> for the project in the Kampun because I love that the most because then I'm under the people uh, yeah, and, yeah. In, in a special environment. And, and, and how is it for you? Because I know you were very realistic also with two feet on the ground. Um, you know, you do a lot for local local communities. I know that. Uh, which one is the one you drive, you, 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 try to push forward the most if you talk about your help to the local communities in Indonesia. Yeah, actually I'm not uh, doing a lot of uh, works in local communities, but uh, what I've done is uh, with uh, with other stakeholders, uh, is that the decision makers and then with uh, the industries, uh -huh. the communities or industrial communities, uh, and uh, I had done a lot with uh, the, the, uh, a lot of uh, universities, so something like that. Yes, uh, uh, I do make some campaigns uh, the local communities, but this is the campaigns that uh, mostly for uh, the climate change awareness mm -hmm. and then uh, mostly for uh, the environment awareness, so nothing more than that. Oh, but, because I say it because we met also at, at, at Tamil School, right? Under uh, uh, Tamil yeah. School, right? And that's a big community in my opinion. And, and, and you were someone uh, active in that time uh, also with them and before also, I think. Um, so uh, if, you, if you would have a say in changing something in Indonesia, if you talk about energy transition in the market, what, what would you change? What would you try to change? Oh, okay. Uh, I would try to, uh, if, uh, yeah, uh, you, you make me dream. <laughs> <laughs> if I have, if I have uh, power to decide. So. Yeah, if you have uh, power to decide, what would you change in Indonesia if you talk yeah, about energy transition? I would love, uh, I would love to change uh, the, the, uh, the electricity uh, market. Uh, and then the electricity market, and then the the uh, mostly uh, I will uh, change uh, and make some uh, some uh, regulation uh, for the uh, mandatory uh, energy efficiency, and then for the mandatory for uh, renewable energy implementation for the fossil fuel uh, power generation. So, so something like that. Because if we talk about uh, if we talk about the, the electricity market in uh, currently we only have a single buyer and then uh, also the single uh, seller which is the PLN. So it will be good if we have uh, multiple buyers and multiple sellers in here. So so the, the competition uh, will work very well. And well, of course, I understand that. So so yeah, I, I just want to say, well, can you explain it a little bit more? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think uh, open competition will be uh, very healthy for Indonesia uh, because uh, we cannot depend on uh, the super super company uh, that decide everything. So we need to have uh, smaller companies uh, that can work together, uh, that can uh, compete with each other and the customer then will be the winner. Okay. Currently, uh, customer never win. So, <laughs> so it always be uh, the, the electricity seller, which is the PLN, is uh, the winner uh, in every situation. So all, uh, all uh, customers must follow uh, the PLN rules, the PLN regulation. Mm -hmm. So for me, it is not uh, it is not good at all. We need to change. We need then to do a lot of uh, a lot of uh, change and re uh, regulation on the the electricity market in it. Yeah, so that everybody can provide to the grid. 
Yeah, uh, something like that. But uh, you know, you, you can maybe uh, make an example or uh, something like a uh, electricity market in Japan, for example. Uh, there are only four or five companies uh, that uh, can buy uh, electricity from the independent uh, power producers, and mm -hmm. then they will sell it uh, to the customers. Okay. So uh, every electricity company then competing each other uh, to implement uh, the, the energy efficiency and to reduce the emission or something like that. And then the customer can choose which company that uh, will uh, will be connected to their homes. And then uh, they also have uh, different prices for their electricity. So I think it is very good. Yeah, it is very good. I come from a country. Healthy. I come from yeah. a country where it works the opposite. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we, we privatized the energy market and then uh, uh, for a short while there was competition and then one took the whole monopoly and actually now we have the same, only the government have no more say. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> monopoly is always, uh, always bad for me. Why? Even the government, even for the government. So uh, if we talk about the monopoly, uh, it always uh, it always bad for me and it... it uh, uh, will always uh, somebody then will lose. So uh, yeah. in business, everybody must win. Yeah, true. Especially in sustainability, that is the magic word. Everybody yes. must win, including the government, including the corruption, including the local people. Yeah, uh, I agree. Okay, and 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 uh, you explain that you that you want to change the regulation, and 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 you also explained why, and and. Do you think that's ever going to happen? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, with the current government, I don't think so. But uh, if we have a strong government uh, that uh, can regulate the PLN and uh, can regulate the, uh, the electricity uh, in a, for the sake of the customers and for the sake of the Indonesia uh, communities, so mm -hmm. I think uh, it can happen. So if I, if, I look, if I look at Indonesia, uh, yeah, I know PLN is, is, is a challenge and yeah. PLN also got the contract in 2019, if I'm correct, to, to uh, um, uh, manage all the renewable energy for all the industries and offices. Uh, and is, it, is Indonesia is for me sometimes an example to the rest of the world because also the people, the power is still to the people, right? you know, and, 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 and the people are the, the boss in the country actually. And the, the government try to get power, but uh, the people do. And and I'm like you. I'm a realistic. I'm a kind of man who believes that everybody can change the world in his own square meter, right? Mm -hmm. and, if, and everybody do that, then something changes. Would would it be just a suggestion for me? And I'm curious how you. Wouldn't it be interesting if the citizens themselves start start working with with with, for example, uh, local renewable energies? Hydro, solar, because then they are allowed to do that, right? And that would mm, no. Why not? Uh, if you live uh, in the island that there uh, there is no PLN in it, so you can do that. But uh, if uh, the island itself is uh, connected to the grid of the PLN, and mm -hmm. then uh, you cannot directly sell uh, your electricity production uh, to the communities because you will need. Uh, kind of no, for yourself, uh, for yourself. For yourself, yeah. I put solar panel on my roof, and I or I yeah. put the uh, bamboo wheel in the river, and I make energy for my house. Is it is it possible? It is possible. It is possible, of course. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's what I meant. So imagine that people that start doing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you cannot sell uh, your electricity to your neighbor because uh, it will be different uh, different uh, regulation on it. And if you not but sell it, just give it because it's for free. <laughs> you cannot also give it uh, directly to your neighbor because uh, so uh, you do what they, they call the the the, uh, the common electricity uh, uh, what they call the, the, the uh, you will need the permit that go uh, the electricity for uh, the electricity for uh, public. Yeah, something like that. Okay, and 
because because um, sustainability because you do energy transition but also a carbon market right and and, and sustainability yeah. uh, and uh, last time sorry i lost you dummy oh still hear me yeah yeah but uh, i cannot see your face can i see my face so yeah nice no, good yeah, that's a little bit too much light in my face now. Well, I'm poop. <laughs> Go on. So, um, what I wanted to say is that last time I saw a show from you uh, uh, where you promoted the, the ESGs, and I saw it on LinkedIn, of course, also. Uh, uh, I, the, the, the implementation of ESGs in companies is, are divided. Uh, how do you see that? Because that's something you push. You're pushing on the on the right way. I, I, I yeah, also yeah, think yeah. it's good. Yeah. Uh, again, that uh, this is kind of uh, this is kind of new business or uh, new system uh, for I call it new business. For for me, it is new business. But for company, uh, it become uh, new regulation mm -hmm. uh, or new requirements uh, to do the ASC. For me, it is a new business, and I think it this will be very good. Uh, then uh, if uh, I can uh, take a part on it, because ESC for the for the company. Uh, will be mandatory uh, if your company uh, already listed on the stock exchange. So, okay. <coughs> if we talk about the ESC implementation in Indonesia, uh, it grows very fast. And uh, many companies now are trying to do the ESC, uh, which is uh, what is ESC itself? ESC has come from the environmental, social, and governance. So, uh, in environmental, you must uh, do a lot of works uh, to uh, protect the environment and then to reduce the emission and then to uh, implement the energy efficiency or something like that. And uh, if you talk with the social, uh, the social itself in the, uh, in the uh, company, uh, so you must uh, do a kind of, uh, what you call the, the uh, good relationship uh, between uh, the, uh, the employee uh, with the boss, mm -hmm. like that, with the management, and then you must do a lot of things uh, uh, to your surrounding communities, uh, the social manners, uh, and the governance itself, meaning that uh, you must have uh, your internal regulation to do all of it. So you must have uh, a target, you must have... Uh, you must have uh, the organization or something like that uh, to implement the sustainability. So the goals of the ESG is then how then the company can show that they uh, already done uh, a lot of things uh, for the sustainability. So if, again, if you, if you project it on the Indonesian market for the for the stock exchange companies, I understand, but uh, I also uh, know from the ESG that if I'm an ESG certified company. Then my suppliers also have to be ESG, but those companies are mostly um, from the UMKM and the UMK. Uh, but for them, it can be a really big investment to go to, in, to, go to ESG. How, how should it? How should should we solve that according to you? Yeah, ESG is mandatory for the big companies and listed companies, not for the UMKM or not for the small no, but companies. When you are ESG certified as a big company, yeah. then your suppliers also have to be ESG. Oh product. yes. Uh, yes. And then the yeah. that will cost for UMKM, I think. Yeah, uh, something like that. But uh, it is not. Uh, it is not too tight. It is not too rigid. Uh, so you must. Uh, you must do some uh, training and workshop uh, with your suppliers uh, mm -hmm. to reduce the emission, and then you can calculate the the uh, the, the emission uh, for the scope three uh, emissions, and then in here. Uh, you can uh, sustain together. So not only your company, uh, but also your suppliers and your your, your second layers uh, will be sustained. Uh, I, it also means that, that the coming decades, there's a lot of uh, work in that in, to do in Indonesia. That means also that a yes. lot of jobs will be created from that. That is, yeah. that is in my opinion, very interesting. That's also why I asked it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. and and and. Uh, uh, if you look at Indonesia, uh, uh, and we talk about sustainability again, and we talk about, for example, the major problem, 
uh, the waste belt in, in, in Bekasi, uh, plastic problem in the ocean. Uh, what is your view on that? Yeah. Sometimes, uh, then if I pointed as uh, the Minister of Environment, you can ask me again the same questions. Yeah. <laughs> currently, currently, it is very difficult to answer because uh, I'm only, again, that uh, I'm only nobody uh, in this republic. So I am only uh, the person who want to see uh, our nation, our environment, then uh, cleaner uh, uh -huh. than current condition. So uh, about plastic and everything, everything, of course, I against uh, the use of plastic. Even me, if uh, then I go to the uh, shop or I go uh, uh, to buy nasi uduk, for example, uh, yeah. I don't want to have uh, my, uh, I don't want to, uh, the seller then give me uh, the plastic bag uh, for, uh, for the, uh yeah, yeah. not bags for example no plastic plastic but i plastic, bring it yes plastic, yeah, plastic, yeah. Uh, i always bring it uh, by myself and then i try to reduce uh all of the plastic use in my uh home and also i have what i call the the reuse of uh, plastic uh bags something like that but i i don't do the recycle because it will be very difficult but i only reduce and then reuse uh, the plastic bag yeah. or the, everything that uh, comes to plastic. Yeah, okay, so, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's becoming a big problem, not only in Indonesia. It's a, I mean, I come from a country that we call that we are zero waste, right, in Blanda, in the Netherlands. Uh, but that's actually not really true. We, we reduce the zero waste as much as we can. And if you talk about, for example, plastic, we export that to Asia and 50% of that end up in the sea, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, yeah. The really zero waste is not really true in our side, but um, um, in my opinion, uh, plastic is one of the worst inventions ever. Uh, 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 it's also amazing. I said that yesterday to Mr. Chaudhary, who's a circuit expert. It's amazing to see that nowadays they are promoting my grandma's shopping bag again because it's made of mm -hmm. cotton, right? And they call it innovation. Um, what, what, what? Uh, I know you said I have. You have to ask that question again when I'm with the minister. But um, what is the biggest challenge of Indonesia at this moment? If we talk about all the sustainability challenges we have, what is the biggest challenge that you are facing? Yeah, Indonesia is uh, the biggest challenge is uh, because the government is one of the problem. So that's the biggest challenge for us. But is it, is it, is it, I come from a different kind of environment. We believe the government has no impact unless you make it, a, in, unless you have let them have impact. Have government. No, no, I mean that, uh, I mean that uh, Indonesia, uh, the government uh, itself, uh, not only as a problem solver, uh, but they also, uh, sometimes they also, uh, you know, they are the problems. Yeah, I know what you mean. We, 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 uh, I'll be honest, we have the same challenges in the Netherlands, and I believe also. Yeah, of course. We are your teacher. There are a lot of corruption. There are a lot of exactly. uh, mis uh, uh, mismanagement uh, in the government side. So uh, it makes uh, all of the sustainability issues uh, become uh, less important uh -huh. uh, than everything. So if we talk about the coal, for example, so there are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, fact findings that uh, many connection uh, between. Uh, the local government and central government with the coal producer, for example. Uh, yeah. Looks, who owns the, the biggest uh, coal company in Asia, for example. So, you cannot, you cannot talk uh, how then to implement the uh, sustainability in Indonesia by the government if the government itself, uh, the people in the government own uh, the coal. Yeah, I understand. I understand. Yeah, because they're making money over it, right? Yeah, okay, okay. because this is very yeah. good money, very good money. True. They're making yep. a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I, I recognize this also in some of my old projects with my teams in, in Rotterdam, where we try to make an energy neutral city block, and we, we successfully did that, and the government also paid us for that. But in the end, it, they, they throw it in the trash can because why the decision makers had uh, money in the local energy company. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 
right? So, so something like that, something like that. So, uh, yeah, this is one uh, of the biggest problem in Asia, why we are uh, still uh, very hard to and very difficult then to implement the sustainability. But, okay, there was our past and our knowledge of problems. Uh, if, I, if we take a look at, at you as a person and, and you still have a, a way to go, how will your future look like? What will you do in Indonesia? What, what is your, your drive, except making money? That is clear. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, I'm not only making money. I mean that uh, money is uh, never uh, be my first intention to uh -huh. do these jobs. Uh, but why I love to do this job? Because uh, why I, I love to work in this field? Because uh, I know that uh, this might be someone who do it. Yeah. Simple as that. If it is me, I will do it. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. I, 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 I agree because I came here as a nobody. I'm still nobody in Indonesia, but seven years ago, uh, I met you six years ago. I decided to come here because I have a big network outside that there's a lot of solutions. And I saw that a lot of opportunities in Indonesia and uh, those six years, seven years that I'm here now, I only see the opportunities grow. It didn't make me money in the opposite of you. But it made me a lot of opportunity, and I believe that Indonesia is on the emerging to become one of the biggest countries in the world in benefit of other people here, uh, and, and and that's what I see. Yeah. But but what would you what 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 will be your part in it? What would if I speak to you again? Okay, we're gonna meet before also. But imagine if we didn't speak, we don't speak anymore, and five years I make Dickie again. What did you do? What, what, what kind of amazing thing would you would you probably have done? If I can if I can uh, tell you no, I must kill you. So <laughs> no, no, it's still uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, still my my, uh, my private intention and then my private journey to do that. But uh, again, that yes, uh, uh, I have my own uh, path and my own uh, step to do that. So for example, Ademi, uh, if we look back uh, 29 years from now, or 25 years or 20, or maybe 15 years from now, or 10 years from now, uh, the road that I walk now is very empty. It's yeah. very empty. Uh, only very few people uh, walk with me uh, or uh, walk uh, in the same direction or maybe in the same road, but only very, very few people. I can connect with my uh, one hand, but currently uh, the road that I have choose is very crowded. Okay. It's very crowded. And then uh, not only me uh, who uh, with my own pace, with my own uh, steps, but there are a lot of uh, Big cars, trucks, buses, everything. Yeah. Motorcycles. So the road that uh, I walked for years is not very crowded. And uh, yes, it is very good. Uh, but uh, we please remember that if we want to have uh, the same intention, the same course on this road, so we also need to have a cooperation with other. Yeah. And then respect. And then uh, also a lot of uh, um, a lot of uh, collaboration on it. So uh, the road that I sent to you is what we call now sustainability and uh, clean energy. Before our end carbon market, of course. Before, yeah. it is very difficult to find uh, <coughs> the uh, who works uh, in this field. Even I, I, I'm very difficult then to explain what my job, uh, what I do uh, to my friends. <laughs> yeah. or, even to my, uh, to my mother-in-law, when she asks me, uh, Dicky, what do you do for life? Uh, very difficult. Even for, for my, my uh, only son, uh, when, when, uh, when my son uh, in his school, 
uh, was questioned by was uh, by by his teachers. Uh, what your daddy do for life? What is uh, your daddy job? So my son at that time has uh, his elementary school, and he only uh, answered that uh, my daddy is a war traveler. <laughs> <laughs> because he travel a lot the world <laughs> go around the globe uh, and then uh, speak to everybody uh, but uh, he doesn't know what I do at that time yeah same things now uh, but with uh, thousands maybe millions of people uh, who currently work uh, in the same road with me uh, the question is, uh, do I have uh, my own differentiation in them or not? I think we uh, have the same level. We have uh, the same right. But of course, uh, yeah, if I still comfortable in this road, I will still walk this road. If not, I can find my own route. As yeah, always. So that's uh, the, the road always goes on, no matter what you do. Eh? And that's, yeah. And maybe you can start writing novels tomorrow about the world. <laughs> <laughs> and and Dicky, before we finishing, um, if we talk about your your specialization and, and people that probably watch this later, um, and we talk about energy transition and about sustainability and the carbon market, and then reflected on Indonesia. What would your message be to the people that would watch this? Yeah, I think if they want to know me better, they must open my LinkedIn, of course, yeah. or follow my Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> or become my friends on Facebook. But okay, it is all uh, the social. Yeah, but then we only uh, joke about each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No joke. <laughs> but uh, of course, it's not real me. But uh, if uh, they want to uh, know me, so. They can invite me, and then I can become uh, their consultant, uh, their uh, uh, collaborator, and yeah, I can work together with them, of course. I'm very open to uh, discuss to for anything, almost anything, and uh, almost everything. So yeah, uh, I think uh, if uh, people wants to know who is Tiki. I still don't know who I am. Why people want to know me? <laughs> <laughs> no, and more important, I'm a, I'm, I'm a coach, a personal coach. So the more important yeah. is that you know who you are and why. That's yeah, the yeah, yeah. Important. Because but it automatically it reflects outside. Yeah, yeah. But but it is very, very difficult to tell who I am because uh, you know that uh, people in the mirror always uh, see me uh, before I, I tell to everybody that... Uh, who really am I? So, yeah. So I, I'm Dicky, uh, the, the consultant, and uh, I'm Dicky uh, that can help you uh, uh, to uh, rebuild uh, your uh, system or to reduce your energy or uh, to develop your uh, couple market projects or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I also uh, very happy if you can invite me uh, to read uh, the poems uh, Together, for example, or <laughs> in poetry readings or something well, like I, that. I, I, it's a similar hobby. I don't write poems, but I write. Uh, I always write novels, and then I write one chapter, and then I quit because too busy with other things. <laughs> <laughs> right. yeah, I understand the problem because I, I'm in Indonesia. I live like a, I live like a local. I live in the Koson, right? And then and then and and I, I go with everywhere with my Gojek or with the bus. But if you see my Facebook and my LinkedIn, everybody thinks that I'm some kind of rich dude living, living in Indonesia. Not true. I live like normal locals and I try to help. And I see that also you also, that's why I like you as a person and why I always uh, uh, respond here and there. is because you are also, you're with two feet on the ground. So Dicky, uh, one more question for me. Uh, Please. Uh, I know we did this out of the blue. Nothing was prepared, not from me, not from you, because I like to see how we can deepen questions. What is your opinion about this show, the last hour? Did you like it to put yourself on the stage like this? I like it, I like it. And it is uh, very good if uh, 
you don't uh, give uh, any list of questions because uh, I love surprises uh, in this kind of show. But maybe you uh, must check, and then maybe you must uh, improve your uh, your camera system or some uh, your your internet or something like that. Because the, for me, uh, you still look uh, always blurry. Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry. I have I have a, a very expensive camera actually, <laughs> <laughs> but I sit on I I sit on the balcony. Maybe that's the connection outside because Ujan yeah. here. It's because of the hujan, maybe. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. It's okay. It's for me. It's 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 like this. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm. I want to thank you for doing this for me. And and. Uh, You're welcome. Maybe we should meet up very soon and talk uh, with a cup of tea or coffee. Uh, I, I'm afraid to ask you for beer. <laughs> <laughs> But so, you know my red hat. Huh? You know my red uh, dummy. If you want to meet me, you know my red uh, per hour. So. I always calculate my rate before uh, before uh, I met with people, and then I tell people, okay, uh, my rate per hour is something like this. Uh, if you want uh, to invite me uh, for a coffee, uh, can you pay me for one two hours discussion or something like that? Something like that, Danny. Or well, maybe I should learn from you because I always do this. <laughs> <laughs> I get invited by university, and I talk an hour about sustainability for for a cup of coffee. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Thank you, Dicky. Um, anything there. you want to say to the audience, or we don't know? Yeah, uh, thank you very much uh, to joining us uh, in this uh, in this uh, discussion. Uh, but we have, uh, for Mr. Kunawan and Mr. Muammar here, uh, that I know that uh, you are joining here, and then uh, yes, uh, my answer may be not uh, too clear or something like that. But this is me. Uh, I always uh, are very serious to be not serious. So, yeah. Yeah, that's that's you. You typically you always how do you call that? Like it seems like no emotion, but you are always there. 